Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Untapped Podcast. My name is Jacob Gable. And my name is Jacob Wartz, guys. Welcome to YouTube exclusive number eight. Boom. <laughs> Let's go. Guys, if this is your first time joining us for a YouTube exclusive, basically what we do in these videos is we do a shortened version of what is a possible future or a past full-length uh, podcast episode that we have done here on YouTube or on all audio platforms. So if you guys have not checked out our full-length podcast episodes, make sure you go either on YouTube, where you already are watching this, or if you like to listen on Spotify, on iTunes, on uh, Prime Podcasts, we're on there, Google Podcasts. Actually, Google might be gone now. But anyway, Google anywhere you listen to your podcasts, we are on it, so go check us out. The boys just hit legs. Uh, over at the gym, we got after it. AKA the most masculine day in That's the right. gym. That's right, we, uh, we yeah. met a couple of cool youngsters that were working out together, getting some filming in, it was a good talk. Yeah, with shout guys. out Ryan and Tino, those That's dudes right. are dope. That's yeah. right, those guys yeah. were awesome. Yeah. Um, so guys, we are two weeks away. When you're watching this, mm. we are two weeks away from possibly the biggest election, maybe in the history of this country, Yep. certainly in our lifetime though. This is, a, uh, this is a huge event, huge day um, for the future of our country. Uh, we've obviously talked about it a lot on the podcast, but that's how quickly they came. We were two weeks away here. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Yeah, it's, it's wild to think about, and I think it's important for you to say what you just said, too, where it, in our lifetime, for sure. Yes. Most people that are live currently, definitely in our lifetime as well. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. Maybe you could say that Abraham Lincoln was a consequential election or something like that Who's back. That? I, I've never heard of him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no American figure. I just, ma I just made him up. <laughs> um, but, you know, like in our lifetime, 100%. And honestly, for the future of our country, I can't really think of a bigger direction change that could really happen with this one. Right. Um, in the wrong direction, for that matter, yeah, too. Yeah, right, right. Um, which is terrifying um, that we even have to be the ones to change this. But, you know, we talk about this because a lot of young people aren't that involved with it. Mm -hmm. We know people that haven't voted ever. No. You know? And we want to change that because there's not even enough people voting at the actual local level right, either right you know we're not even talking about just federal just kamala and trump we're talking about local as well right and how important that is and how important it is to actually educate yourself on what's going on yes you also need to be asking yourself am i actually educated or am i just saying what's on msnbc fox cnn abc cbs all the mainstream mm -hmm. ones you know, am I considering all different viewpoints on X? Am I considering all different viewpoints on social media that I see? Or when I look up my own stuff? You right. have to be looking at all these different angles that come to this. And we've came to conclusions off that for sure. sure but sure. more than likely, if you really open your mind to actually being open-minded, because there's a difference. Right. Like, I consider us too open-minded because we'll listen to any idea. Yeah. But and we'll have the conversation too. Exactly. Yeah, but we yeah. but we know where to draw the line standard Correct. wise because Correct. of what certain things lead to. Yes. AKA somebody that is rated as the most like Marxist senator ever in our country. More you more know? so than an openly socialist <sighs> yeah. senator. Which AKA is which Bernie is hard Sanders. to even which again, we've talked about Bernie before. Bernie is one of those guys you can respect because he's just outward about it. Yeah. He's yeah, been outward he, about he's it not this whole, it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. He's not hiding it. He's not he's not misleading you and telling you that he's just liberal or right. something like that. He's like, right. No, I'm literally a socialist. Right. I'm like, I, right. I, would, I would plunge your country into communism very, if you let me in, basically. Very open about it, yeah. yes. Yeah. So guys, basically what we wanted to hit on here real quick is just and and you you kind of started to go down this direction here, but it's it's understanding who and what you're voting for mm -hmm. at every single level, whether it's local, state, or federal, because all three are vital to the future and just vital to your everyday life. You know, mm -hmm. I think most people have this, this idea in their mind that, well, my vote doesn't really matter. It doesn't really change anything. You know, when the president, whoever's president, it doesn't really affect my life. Well, it does though. I yeah. mean, compare these last now, basically four full years almost of Biden and Harris, compare that to the previous four with Trump and Pence. And I'm not saying Trump and Pence were perfect because they certainly weren't. <laughs> there's, Pence. there's a lot of things, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there's a, there's a lot of things that Trump promised the first time around that he didn't get done, whether yeah, that's yep. solely on him or solely on having no help from Congress or whatever it might mm -hmm. be. There's just things that he promised to get done that did not get done, okay? That's a simple fact or, of the matter. Or, or he pushed things through like Operation Warp Speed because maybe he yes. was manipulated whether whether Correct. or not, or like he thought it was the right thing to do, whatever, and it was wrong. Uh, right, you know? right. and and. And that's a, that's a great point too, that, you know, if Trump gets back in there or if Harris wins, 
and you voted for Harris or you voted for Trump, like both of them are going to do things wrong as mm-hmm. well. They're going to make the wrong decisions, and that's going to happen at times. Like we all make the wrong decisions at times. You know, when mm-hmm. you're when you're put in a situation to make a decision that affects other people. You know, the President of the United States has a huge responsibility because they're not only dealing with the country of the United States, but they're dealing with the world. If we're being completely honest, mm-hmm. you know. But back to the original point here. You know, the the city hall that I vote at is actually like right over our left shoulders here. And anytime there's a local or state election, whether it's primaries or the actual ones, I'm always there, my family's always there, we're always sure to, to be active in the elections. There's not many people. No. And, and this is one no. polling place yeah. in a, you know, not a small town, but kind of a small town, okay, smaller. And the sense that it's a little alarming the lack of people yeah. and 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 we've both talked about this on and off the podcast but we're always the youngest ones in there like by far absolutely like possibly yeah. by 10 plus years easily it, maybe even 20 it, it might be 20 plus you know every time i've been in one yeah. and and mm. and that's not a good thing guys like we're both 26 okay so we've been able to vote for eight years now and to my knowledge i have voted in every single one okay i'll, I'll speak for myself there i have voted in every single one that mm-hmm. i can because it's also kind of fun. I, like, I, like, I think maybe on my end, I might maybe miss one local one. Yeah. I might have one year, but I think yeah. that's it. Other than that, and like you were talking about just your polling place too. I've been to five different polling places. And again, there is, when it comes to local stuff and the state stuff, there is hardly anybody yeah. there. Yeah. Hardly anybody there. Right. At each time I've been to these different polling locations, which percentage wise doesn't add up. No. So it's like, it's not an isolated incident is right. my point here. And right. I think most people can attest to that when the numbers are saying that 10 to 15% of people in St. Louis County mm-hmm. showed up to vote. Yeah. The rest of everybody else sat out. Yeah. Right. Right. They were like, yeah, I don't, I mean, it doesn't really affect me. Yes, it does. Yeah. A hundred percent does. the local ones. I mean, yeah. the, the, the ones that affect your individual town, whether it's, you know, Wildwood or Eureka or Manchester or, you know, Clayton or whatever, you know, Chesterfield, whatever. We're talking about towns here in St. Louis. Like, your mayor, your council, your boards, your whatever's like judges, judges, mm-hmm. your city managers, like those all absolutely matter. Yes. You know, even if it's to the point where a new park gets built or new trails are made, you know, we got a trail right here in front of us. We're sitting on it like that still affects your life. Maybe it doesn't affect your taxes or the money in your pocket, but mm-hmm. It does because your tax money is what pays for those types of things. And if you want something like that, then you have to go be active and you have to go vote for it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I won't sit here and say that I've been to every, you know, hearing or anything. As a matter of fact, I've never been to any of them. And honestly, you probably should go because it would be a good thing to be a part of, you know, Agreed. and, and yeah. learn, learn from and learn how a local government really works. But the main point here is understand who and what you're voting for at every single level and especially when it's a presidential election, mm-hmm. it absolutely yep. matters. I, I you know, I want to, and I want to end off that and transition to the next thing, but because, so a lot of people will talk about, you know, like we said, your vote doesn't matter, which is a complete lie. Yeah. It's just not true yeah. because everybody will say like, oh, I don't know if I trust election integrity. I don't know if one person's going to make that much of an impact. Like, and there'll be those two arguments and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And we hear the election integrity arguments hundred sure. percent. Like sure. there's, there is questions 1000% real, real questions with a lot of right. val- validity behind them. But the thing is, that's a very lazy cop out. Like voting is the easiest way to just jump in and put your voice out there into the world, so to speak. And if you vote, that's your starting point there. You know, like right. that's 100%, that is a non-negotiable that you should be at the polling place voting for who you believe in. And again, Forrest and I have talked about this, like we, you research the candidates for 30 minutes to an hour and that tells you all you need to know usually Absolutely. a lot of times. You can dive in even more than that, which honestly, like if you're not sure about your discernment about it, go multiple hours on it for right. sure. Right. But it doesn't take that long to understand who you're voting for and why you're voting for them and whatnot. So that's important there. No matter what, election integrity aside, you know, you're just one person. That's not true. Yeah. That's not true. You're not just one person because it adds up right. as, as a part of society. Now, past the voting aspect and whatnot, you have to then, as an individual, be ready to be a part of cultural change mm-hmm. because it point. can't just be voting, as we talked about. Like, you have to be active. In our way, it's a lot of times social media and talking to people on the ground. Yes. That's that's our way. We go through social media, podcasts. We go through these type of platforms on YouTube. We talk to people this way. We talk to people in person whenever we get the chance. We have real conversations with mm-hmm. them as we've had some heated ones in the past sure, and whatnot. Sure, sure. You know? So we actually do this on the ground and whatnot. And it also means you get deeper relationships, by the way, mm-hmm. whenever you do that too. And you don't just talk about 
about the sports or the weather or something like that with right. your friends and that's it, <laughs> you know, which is garbage. Right. But, you know, because you, you and I love sports and we've talked about it, but you have to talk about other deeper stuff to yeah, really yeah, gain a deeper friendship and a deeper understanding of other people too, for right. that matter as well. So I want to, I want to encourage you guys to also be one that personal excellence aspect that Andy Frisella always talks about. That's his brand and whatnot. Personal excellence, the ultimate rebellion. You have to be better in yourself. So that way you can be a part of that cultural change mm -hmm. because then next thing you know, what happens? I was, I'd been training and exercising myself since I was 17, 18 years old, a little bit in high school. And then because of that, I'd been training for two years, three years. My brother got on his stuff because of that. Mm -hmm. Wurtz also, I was able to mentor him, so to speak, yeah, yeah. into training and then bring him along with me as well. And then my family starts asking questions about it every yep. time they see me because yep. they're starting to see physical results. That's just the physical side of things. Right, right. That's not, just, that's not even just you speaking out and talking about certain things and being well-versed on the topics you are smart on. Mm -hmm. You need to be doing that because culturally, if you're going to have kids, you don't have an option. Like you, and by the way, if you don't have kids, you 100% should be caring about other people's kids. It shouldn't be just like, oh, like it won't affect me because I'll be dead. Right. You're, I mean, you're a piece of shit if you say that. Yeah. Like objectively, you're not a good human being if you say that. You should care about, even if you don't have kids, how other people's kids are affected and, and how this country is going to be after you're gone. Right. So that is also an on the ground change and not just voting. Because, one of, time. because of the situation we're in with our world and our country today is because of what the generations ahead of us put up with. Absolutely. You know, the generations that are, that are gone now you know, not even necessarily the ones that are still alive to a point for mm -hmm. sure, mm -hmm. but even the one before them, like now we're dealing with the repercussions of that. So it's up to our generation here to turn that around, you know, and to get that back. 100%. So a final point here, and it kind of goes with the one, you know, where we're talking about understand who and what you're voting for, but it's understand the implications. You know, mm -hmm. all of those things that Gable just mentioned here, the, the cultural shifts and things like that, the personal excellence, all that, that matters. That's the implication right there. But it's also, you know, if a certain candidate, if she <laughs> gets in, you're going to continue to suffer with your wallet. 100%. Yep. You're going to continue to suffer anytime you go to pay for anything. You're going to continue to suffer. You just are. And I understand right now, at least here in our area, gas prices, for example, have gone down. Huh. How convenient. Well, I, I was going to say, like, you, then you look into the strategic oil reserves. Yeah, right. And we're literally delving into strategic oil reserves that you're supposed to use in times of desperation. Uh, correct. They're just using it to drop the prices. Just to use it. That's it. That's it. it They're just, like, oh, okay, like, make us look better. Exactly. And that's what I was about to mm. say. Just to make them look better. Now, granted, I will say, tons and tons of presidents do that type of stuff oh, right absolutely. before the election. Yeah. Because it's a way to be like, well, look, like, now you're only paying 280 at the gas pump instead of the, the mm. 380 or the four that you were paying a year ago or whatever. Yep. Look at how great we're doing. Okay. Well, shut up. Little do you know, we have the internet now and we can check receipts on that type of stuff. <laughs> I mean, seriously. We just now have the internet? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, just, it, it just 2024 just okay, started. Actually. Okay. Yeah, good. Just, good. Just, to make, just to make sure on I that. I couldn't yeah. remember the exact start yeah. date of the internet. And I, I was thinking it was 2024, but I, I couldn't remember. <laughs> and it's Vance. Podcast started this year. <laughs> Podcast started this year and just got, started going, going crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> um, but that, that's just one example if a certain candidate, you know, if she were to get in. Yeah. Well, and. And the thing is, like, again, like everybody a lot of times will tune out when they hear a certain candidate or whatnot and all this stuff. But all you have to do is look back at candidates' records because all I care about, like, yeah, like, is Trump not the greatest person or public speaker? Did he have stuff that we hate and we dislike that he did during his presidency? Absolutely. But I will tell you right now, I know that when he was in those four years, I know we had more money in our pockets. My parents had more money in our pockets. So did yours mm -hmm. and whatnot. We were safer. Exactly. We were safer Our cities because were safer. crime data is being screwed with as well. Uh -huh. It's not talked about. We mm -hmm. can dive down that in full podcast episode. But the, the border wasn't as crazy as it is the, now. Exactly. There were yeah. less wars. Which it has to be. It has to be deportations. Like that's that's the thing. Like when you take the emotions out of politics, because that's the problem. A lot of people look at things through an emotional lens of we need to care about people. We need to take care of people. Mm -hmm. And that's a great way to look at it until it starts hurting the actual citizens of that country. Exactly. Which is exactly what's happening because you bring in illegals and just do, and don't vet them, next thing you know, shit hits the fan. Yeah. Because you don't know who's coming in at all. And so there's no way to actually tell what's going on. Right. So you, that's why, and again, 
we could go down a whole rabbit hole with that for sure. So I'm, I won't even dive down the full legal immigration rabbit hole. But the point is, is that you look at years, everybody, literally everybody you talk to in person. I, I mean, I work with tens, if not hundreds of people per day. Every person you talk to is literally saying, yeah, like everything's so expensive right now. Mm -hmm. Prices have gone up. Housing mar the housing market's crazy. All this type of stuff. I'm going to tell you right now, I didn't hear that type of stuff and I was working with the same amount of people when Trump was in office. Mm -hmm. And that's just a harsh truth, but I care about what my kids are going to have in this country. I don't care about some emotional aspect of, you know, you saying like, well, he's a threat to democracy. He's going to do this. Like you have to look past that. That's why. Is he though? Also, yeah. like, is, is he? he? Is I, he though? Like, that's a great question because, again, those first four years, you're acting like he like locked like gay people up yeah, or right, whatever for right, being gay. Right. You're you're act, you're acting like he like killed di political dissonance and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And it's like last time I checked, I didn't see any of that. Yeah, I, I, didn't did, see it. I did see that from some people on that we could talk about. That'd be a rabbit hole right. and get us taken off YouTube for that. Right. But you know, like that's a whole rabbit hole for you, you guys. Can't handle the truth. Yeah, you can't handle the truth. Um, but all, I mean, all time movie quote, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and guys, it's just important because we, we can't think of stuff in the lens of only through this, you know, bleeding heart, mm -hmm. um, caring lens and whatnot, you have to make rational decisions, yeah. which is so important why we talk about men in society, because men, when we're better and we're stronger and testosterone's better, we make more rational decisions for society, yeah. which is very important. Rational is always the word I come back to. What makes the most sense long-term? Okay, yeah, like you might have to kick somebody out of the country. That's true, but you're going to lead to a better country for everybody else when that happens. And you're gonna be able to bring better people in through legal immigration at that point in time if you have a better country that way. Right. We don't wanna just completely throw it all out the window because we care about people, right. supposedly. U.S. citizens mm -hmm. can't just go to another country. Exactly. I, was, I saw a video on TikTok exactly. today. This guy was trying to rent a private jet to go over to, I believe it was Turkmenistan, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like him and six buddies or something. They were trying to get a private jet. And the guy that works for the private jet company was like, you know, you have to have a visa. You have to have a valid pa passport for at least six months. You have to ha have a letter inviting you to the country. Otherwise, they will not let you in. And the guy was like, well, your competitors were gonna let me in. He goes, I have to believe that that's not true. He goes, because you have to have all these things. So it's not like it's not like U.S. citizens can just go move to other countries whenever we want. Like, we get yeah. sent back. So sovereignty is not a new concept. No. So sovereign borders are not a new no. concept at all. No. They've why been do, that way throughout history. Why do people put fences around their backyards? <laughs> I mean, it's literally the exact same concept. Yeah. Like, or you lock your doors. Or you lock your doors. Which I hope you lock your doors. Yeah, I mean, right, seriously, like, right. depending on the area you live in. But I mean, there are some right. people I met that just don't. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's and, insane. And like, granted, there are, I, I suppose there are some areas where... Maybe that's not really necessary, but we do. And we're in a very safe neighborhood. Absolutely. We do. We absolutely, absolutely. do. We lock our cars. We yeah. lock our house. Mm -hmm. You know? Because we care. Exactly. And which, which we actually care. Right. About real things yes. at that point in time because we yes. want to lead to a better country for everybody else. You make rational decisions, the country gets better that way. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's thinking logically, not emotionally. Mm -hmm. That's what we have to do, guys. We are two weeks away from this massive election. And if it does not go the correct way... We're going to be in trouble. There's going to be questions. There's going to be there's, questions. There's going to be questions, actions oh, yeah. we might have to consider. A lot of stuff like That's that. That's right. Yeah. That is right. So, guys, keep all of this in mind as we are, again, we are two weeks out. Keep all of this in mind. Do your research. Know who and what you're voting for. Know the implications of who and what you're voting for. And uh, make the right decisions. Okay? Guys, mm -hmm. until next time, peace and love. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Whew!